meet my friend Amy. She's practically jumping out of her seat with excitement as the plane touches down in Beijing. She's excited for tax-free shopping, nighttime sightseeing, and a free transit hotel. But hold on tight, because things are about to go off track in the next 20 hours. So get ready, Amy, for a wild ride you didn't see coming. Our flight from Tokyo to Beijing was relatively smooth, except for one tiny detail. Japanese train schedules are an absolute mess, and let's face it, we're not exactly experts when it comes to unraveling the mysteries of Japanese logic. As a result, we lost precious hours of souvenir shopping and satisfying our food cravings. But we were determined to make up for it in Beijing. Before our flight, we did our homework and crunched the numbers. We booked a transit hotel provided for free by China Airlines through their official website because our layover exceeded the magical 8-hour mark. And guess what? It was absolutely free of charge. Yeah, here's a juicy tidbit for you. If you have a layover of 8 hours or more, especially during the night, you can apply for a free hotel provided by certain airlines. We also made sure to meet all the requirements for leaving the airport without a visa, following their very own rules. Seems foolproof, right? Well, we thought we had it all figured out, but things took an unexpected turn. Those airport authorities simply refused to let us step foot outside. Why, you ask? Well, apparently they have the power to do so, and that's reason enough for them. They weren't interested in listening to us or attempting to understand our situation. It could be due to a lack of proper English skills among the international airport staff. Who knows? But here's the thing. We stumbled upon stories of these mysterious lucky ones who were granted permission to explore the city. How did they do it? Well, that's the million dollar question. Just like us, they had no visa and had booked their hotel through the airline. It felt like a peculiar lottery, with us being the unfortunate losers this time. If you happen to be one of the lucky ones, you'll definitely want to check out my previous video about Beijing. Trust me, it could be a real money saver, especially when it comes to avoiding those infamous tea scammers in the city. So there we were, stranded without hope a hotel, or the energy to continue our battle with the airport staff. It was time to regroup and come up with a new plan. We decided to take a casual stroll and see what this place had to offer. Well, surprise, surprise. And by surprise, I mean a not so pleasant one. Every store we came across was closed, even though it was just a smidge past 6 p.m. No restaurants, no souvenir shops, no food, no clothing, nothing. It felt like a ghost town. Oh wait, there was actually a cosmetic store with most of the items out of stock and an open booze boutique. Because when life throws you a curveball, what you really need is makeup that doesn't fit and an overpriced drink to drown your sorrows. It's like they knew how to add insult to injury. But finally a beacon of hope emerged. It was Starbucks. Yes, you heard that right. It was the only bastion of civilization in the barren landscape. And guess what? We considered ourselves lucky because we had union pay cards. Without it, or some cold hard cash in win, we'd probably be staring at starvation right in the face. They didn't accept any other cards like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or any other cards. By the way, you can't rely on vending machines either for the same reason. As for the internet, to access the Wi-Fi, you'll need to find a ticket issuing machine for authorization. They're scattered in various areas, but believe me, the only one that actually worked was conveniently stationed near the information point. Sure, you might have heard rumors about getting a verification code via phone, using your phone number, but neither I nor anyone I know ever received that mythical code. After finally satisfying our hunger and catching up on social media, our next mission was to find a decent place to crash. We knew about a hotel inside the transit area, hoping they had available rooms. The staff enthusiastically offered to show us around, boasting about the numerous options. But as soon as we stepped into those rooms, it hit us like a ton of bricks. Darkness enveloped the space, dirt and musty smells lingered in the air, and forget about any breath of fresh air because the air conditioning was as good as decoration, and internet access was limited to the lobby. 
Those rooms were nothing short of hot, stuffy boxes. And guess what? They had the nerve to slap a price tag of around $150 for a double room. But wait, there's more. For the luxury of taking a shower, they demanded an additional $17 per person. Can you believe it? It was a daylight robbery. Would you be willing to stay in a place like that? Or maybe you've already had the pleasure. Share your horror stories in the comments below. I would really love to hear them. So we set out to find a place outside the hotel, exploring the airport area in search of a suitable spot. With the airport nearly deserted, it promised a range of options. We were in no rush, so we explored almost every inch of the area until we stumbled upon the ultimate gem. It was divided into multiple zones with partition walls, equipped with charging points, comfortable benches, and a dining area complete with chairs and tables. It felt like a deserted hostel, but with a stunning view of the plane's landing. So grab your instant noodles, bring along your adventurous spirit, and get ready to embrace this adventure to the fullest. Oh, and here's an additional tip for those who plan to sleep over, just like we did. Take a look at the timetable and try to find gates where there are no upcoming flights during the hours after your slumber. You know, just to avoid waking up in the middle of a bustling crowd. Trust me, it's the little thing that can make a big difference. Finally, after a long day, I had the chance to sleep like a baby. Overall, I must say it was a rather pleasant experience. It was quite an adventure, just like in the Night at the Museum film. I hope you found my video helpful, but keep in mind that things can change on a daily basis. If you have any Beijing airport stories or recommendations, I'd love to hear them. And if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. It keeps me motivated to bring you more exciting travel tales. Stay tuned and keep on exploring. And now, since I've showcased Amy's photo at the beginning of my story, it's time for me to reveal my cringe-worthy content. In the name of our friendship and my own well-being, I'm making this sacrifice so that Amy doesn't hunt me down. I never thought I'd be